Well, if you think about Macau as one of the uh, as one of the economic powerhouses in Asia, so sur surely if Macau would be impacted significantly by a natural hazard such as tsunami, there would be a, a global consequence economically. Um, from a science point of view, um, policymakers have to think about that. You know, if I'm now relatively safe some, from tsunamis, but in the future I might not be, that has consequences. So policy, policymakers especially need to need to listen to scientists who have the tools or engage with scientists who have the tools uh, to, uh, uh, to predict the future or the, the future condition and then uh, make, decision, uh, make decisions now uh, on maybe do some investments that um, mitigate some of the worst uh, effects. So this research is, is interesting because it started in the South China Sea. South China Sea is a very interesting area because it's an area of rising sea level and it's an area of, uh, um, of locations of, of significant economic powerhouses, such as Macau, Hong Kong, and others. Um, essentially, the tsunami hazard depends on the location of where your coastal city is. Uh, every location that, or every city that is located at, the, at an ocean with a subduction zone, uh, large tsunamis are possible. The Pacific Ocean, for example, is surrounded by subduction zones. We call it also Ring of Fire. Um, therefore, all the big cities in the, in the Pacific, including Los Angeles, including San Francisco, including Seattle, to name a few in the United States, uh, will have an um, increase in tsunami hazard in the future. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take that, what we learned in Macau and in the South China Sea, and apply it to the conditions and the situations that we have at the West Coast, but also on the East Coast, because we have a tsunami threat also in the Atlantic.